Well, good evening. Oh, it's a little bit different lighting in here. All the lights are off. All I've got is just a uh, just a single bulb up there. But um, it changes the look. It, all the colors are different. Um, the fluorescent lighting kind of gives everything a, a weird look. This is a little more. This looks. What I'm seeing on the lens is exactly what the flowers look like. This flower is very red and white. Very red and white. Same with this one. It's really red and white. Kind of burgundy color. I came out here to um, check out the Brassavola nodosa. Now look at this bloom. I showed this bloom the other day and it was almost purple or blue. Now, that's what it really looks like. <laughs> it's the bur that burgundy color. Under the right light, it's, it changes its look, I guess. Nice big bloom, too. So it's dark. You probably can't see much out here. But, um, <clears throat> I like to come out here and check it out when it's dark. When different lighting, because things look different. The plants, the color of the plants looks different now, even. You know, you see deficiencies now look different than they do under the lighting that I was looking at before, the fluorescent lighting from before. So, things might look different now. It's always a good idea to check things out. A lot of new growth, too. I notice these cats over here have two or three big spots, or two or three big um, new canes coming out of the bottom. Sherry baby looks good. I wish you guys could smell that. Oh my gosh, it's just incredible. Just incredible. Such a little flower, but so strong, so strong. But um, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out my feeding routine. I was thinking about this afternoon after I fed the cow mag this afternoon. I did a video, a couple of videos this afternoon and couldn't put them up. One, I knocked my tripod over right after a great video. Mixed up calcium cow mag and was feeding the feed my orchids talking about it and um, managed to um, catch my foot on the tripod and knock it over. So uh, you guys won't be seeing that unless I do a blooper show. <clears throat> but um, regardless, everybody got calcium today. I'm giving them once a month. I know once a month I want to give everybody calcium and I'm going to start probably giving a potassium supplement as well um, just because of what I read, not to everybody, not to everybody. Um, potassium being one of the most important elements, one of the most important growing minerals I need for sure. Um, and I'm adjusting my nitrogen. Um, I don't have a proper mix. I've been using the Better Grow mix. I don't like using it. It's half a monocle and half an urea. Or half nitrate and half a monocle, it's going to leave me a little bit more residual than, I'm, than I care to have at this particular point. So I'm not going to keep using it. Um, I'm just using up some of my samples that I've, people have given me before. Some of my liquid stuff, um, hydroponic solution stuff. But I don't want to keep using it. So um, I had MSU ordered and I, um, I don't want to um, mislead a viewers or anything. I did have MSU ordered and um, I canceled the order on that after... Um, I had ordered it and it was waiting for a couple of days and before they shipped it out I can canceled it. I was reading up some things on it. It seems like a lot of people um, are getting MSU mixed up. Um, they're, when they receive it they're getting the, they're ordering the, the RO or the rainwater formula and they're getting the other one. They're getting the tap water formula and vice versa. And um, I don't just, I've just read a bunch of odd things about it. I have no issues with MSU at all and to me it's one of the top fertilizers out there and I really wanted to give it a try. Is um, that was one, and also the other one I'd really rather get the other one um, is Peter's XL. Um, it has the calcium, magnesium, and the trace elements added also. Um, but I can't find it in the U.S. unless I buy a 25 pound bag. It's only like 50 bucks for a 25 pound bag. I don't mind that, but I don't, it's not the 50 dollars, it's the I don't want 25 pounds of fertilizer sitting around. Um, <clears throat> again, that's salt and um. Even though it's great stuff to grow with, I just don't know, <laughs> you know, um, what else I can use it on. I'm sure I can probably use it on plants outside, but uh, I may invest in it if I can get enough viewers who are interested in maybe taking that off, some of that off my hands. I mean, for shipping, I'll send that out to somebody probably. 
um, pretty much for the cost of shipping. I'm not worried about recouping my $50 as much as just let me get rid of some of this fertilizer. I don't want to have all that around. Um, typically, when I buy a mix, it's usually in um, four pounds or two pound quantity. So um, I'll probably keep um, a couple of pounds of it back and break it up into you know two pound or three pound packages or something like that, and I'll sell them off. Maybe seven or eight of them like that. And um, if somebody's interested, I'll maybe do that. Um, I'd like to get that Excel and try that. It's made specifically for for um, tap. Or they have it one specifically for rainwater, and it has magnesium. It has seven percent magnesium. I think four percent Epsom salts or so magnesium sulfate, and um, actually it's magne magnesium oxide, and um, the calcium is a is an oxide also. So they're chelated. So they're going to mix. I don't have to worry about dropping my pHs. It's a ch the whole mix is chelated. Um, and it contains trace elements also, so I would like to get my hands on that one. Um, I've heard really good things about it. Um, for some reason, the Australian and New Zealand growers are using it, and um, it's just now catching on over here in the U.S. So, if anybody's using that, let me know. I'd like to get feedback on that. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing is buying a probably going to have to buy a 25 pound bag of it for 50 bucks and just break it up. And I just don't want it. I just don't want that much of it. Um, so if anybody's interested, um, I might start start getting a list together. But uh, if I buy it, I'll let everybody know, and then I'll start a list together. But um, just keep that in mind, I guess, if you're watching. Let me get out of here. It's already it's too dark in here to really look real, real well. I got a lot of plants fed today, a lot of plants watered today. Um, calcium went well. Um, it was a good video, just super simple. Six, I took some rainwater. Um, Filled up my sprayer with rainwater, then dumped it into bowls so I had it measured out the right amount of water to fill my sprayer up. And I put about eight drops of cow mag in there. I used cow mag versus calcium nitrate because um, the cow mag is, is chelated and it's calcium phosphate versus calcium nitrate. So it's, it can be absorbed at a higher pH. I don't have to drop my pH down to 5.8. So I didn't have to add citric acid, which would have pushed my PPMs up higher than I wanted to go. I'm feeding very, very low parts per million right now. <clears throat> CalMag today only gave 40 parts per million. One of the articles I was reading the other night, and um, I'll try and remember to put the link on here, but uh, Dr. Wang does incredible studies. He's done so many studies on growing orchids. It's just incredible. Um, Phalaenopsis, a lot of Phalaenopsis growing. Um, anyway, one of his studies I was reading last night, as a matter of fact, it was last night, they were talking about um, collecting rainwater off trees and measuring the total dissolved solids, you know, the PPMs of water coming off of trees. And um, remarkably, their findings in the study were um, um, it averaged out at less than 25 parts per million, which to me was an incredible, incredible, <laughs> interesting piece of information. Very interesting piece of information. I would have thought it had been much higher, closer to 100. Um, I didn't think it would be much more than that, but I really wasn't expecting less than 25. <clears throat> and it just goes to show you, and that 25 has to be broken up into um, calcium, magnesium, NPK, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I mean, how much calcium is a plant getting out of 20, less than 25 ppms? How much of that is calcium? <clears throat> See what I mean? So at what point do you need to feed 150 parts per million of calcium to your plants or 450 parts of nitrogen or 100 parts of nitrogen like some of the manufacturers recommend? You know, they're selling you a product. Keep that in mind. Um, less than 25 parts per million comes down the tree. To me, that was um, really interesting information. <coughs> Excuse me for the coughing here tonight. My voice is, is not really good right now. Um, anyway, um, when I was feeding the calcium this afternoon, I only fed 40 parts per million. So because I'm feeding low parts per million, um, I don't have a lot of room in there for citric acid or any kind of other buffers or something to drop the pH. So using CalMag fit that fit that scenario a little bit better. Hope that'll help explain it. But um, it was an interesting, interesting paper, really interesting study that um, they were talking about um, how low it was. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, and they were saying average too. So they were checking it seasonally um, throughout the year at different locations and stuff. And um, I just found that to be very interesting, very interesting. Anyway. Let me get out of this dark room. Um, I'm sure nobody's enjoying this. Um, making everybody dizzy in the dark now. But, um, uh, I can't smell that well anymore, but boy, I can smell that. It's very strong in here. Beautiful, beautiful scent coming from those, um, that little star. Absolutely beautiful. And it's mixing with some of the other stuff in here too, I'm sure. 
during the daytime it's kind of it's kind of an odd scent in here. Tonight you can smell the the nadosa a little bit more. Anyway, have a wonderful evening. Um, get out to work in that garden. Spend some time with your plants. Um, thanks for all the comments. Thanks for watching.